The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Bill Peterson. Uh, great to see everyone, although I guess I can't see all of you. Uh, I think you can probably see me. I want to uh, welcome you to the ISAC annual report webinar and thank you for joining us today. As you probably know, every year ISAC publishes an annual report in the November issue of the Iowa County Magazine. While we did publish the annual report in the November issue this year, we thought we would try a little something different this year and a little more personal. So we've asked each of the ISAC team members to give a brief report on their team's activities. Before we get to those reports though, I want to share with you a slide that reflects my views of ISAC's organizational structure and our operational process. The Iowa State Association of Counting is a member organization. I want you to understand that as a member, you are the basis for everything we do as an organization. And when I use the term operational process, what I'm really referring to is our method of organizational governance. So ISAC members are combined into 16 affiliates. Six affiliates represent elected offices and 10 affiliates represent various department heads and professional staff. Each of our, each affiliate elects or appoints representatives to serve on the ISAC board of directors, although supervisors appoint three. Members of the ISAC board of directors annual elect, annually elect four individuals from ISAC's elected affiliates to serve as officers. These officers include a president and three vice presidents. These officers make up what's called the ISAC executive board. So Katie, if we could go back to the previous slide, that would be great. Also serving on the ISAC board are three ISAC past presidents and two representatives from the National Association of Counties. These ISAC officers and board members comprise the organization's governing body. These operational processes are outlined in ISAC's organizational documents. As members, you have approved and amended our Articles of Incorporation over the years. They were first adopted in October of 1964, but have been amended several times since then. In addition, the ISAC Board of Directors has adopted the organization's bylaws. These are available on the ISAC website if you're ever interested in reading them. The board has also adopted a set of what are called ISAC Board Policies to provide further direction and guidance to staff on association operations. ISAC, the ISAC bylaws provide that the board of directors shall hire an executive director and uh, to carry out the policies and decisions of the ISAC board. The executive director is authorized to hire staff, advise the board, enter into contracts and agreements approved by the board. The ISAC board annually submits to you as members for approval. This generally takes place at our spring conference in March. Uh, the budget provides financial resources for the executive director and staff to work toward accomplishing the organization's goals and objectives. I refer to myself and other staff members as ISAC team members. What we accomplish is only possible because of you and the board of directors and also the efforts of every member of our team. I know that I have talked about this before, but I wanna share with you again that ISAC team members have adopted five core values. These values remind us of our responsibility to you. Team members will do the following. We will be member focused. In other words, we'll remember who we work for. We'll seek personal and business excellence, and we're gonna focus on achieving the very best results with the resources that we have. We will respect others. Regardless of differences, everyone deserves respect. 
will work as a team. We're all working for the same goal and true teamwork is what drives success. And finally, we'll have integrity. It's important to be personally honest and ethical in all that we do. I wanna close my portion of the program with a sincere thank you to you. I want to thank each of you for the work that you do every day to make your county and your community a great place to live. We are so proud to represent you and work on your behalf. And we're grateful every day for the opportunity to do that. Now I'd like to uh, hand the microphone over to uh, my friend and co-team member, uh, Jamie Cashman, who's our government relations manager. Jamie, you ready to go? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, well, thank you, Bill. So uh, uh, again, I will just uh, reiterate what you just uh, said in terms of it's an honor and a privilege uh, to represent ISAC, uh, especially on the government relations side and going to the Capitol every day. So I, for those that don't know me, I'm Jamie Cashman. I'm the government relations manager for ISAC and uh, our other uh, man on the hill is uh, Lucas Bankin. And so what we do is uh, we uh, advocate on a daily basis uh, for uh, ISAC on our uh, legislative priorities and everything that goes along with that. And so uh, just to be uh, quick here, uh, so our priorities for this uh, upcoming session in 2021 are mental health and disability services. And uh, this has been a long uh, standing uh, priority for ISAC. Uh, what uh, we have seen over the previous years is uh, uh, again, increasing mandates on counties uh, to provide uh, you know, complex mental needs services and also on children. But again, uh, they, uh, the legislature has not uh, given us the resources. So first and foremost, we're asking for uh, state money uh, if that's not possible, we're asking for, to, uh, for the state to give us the flexibility to adjust our levies accordingly to provide these services. And then uh, lastly, not penalize us if we can't provide those services because of lack of funding or uh, what is happening right now is lack of providers. And so I will turn it over to Lucas for our next priority. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, the next priority is one that has been on the list for a number of years, and it's one of those things where uh, no action is is good. Uh, the backfill is uh, a guaranteed uh, funding to local governments for making up the loss of uh, revenue in uh, funding because of the reduction in taxable value on commercial and industrial property. Uh, it's just over $152 million. $29 million goes to counties each year. And as I said, it's, it's a standing limited appropriation. So as long as there is no action, that's a, a good thing. And it's a reimbursement uh, because of the uh, the legislatively imposed reduction in taxable value on commercial and industrial property. Uh, counties are then being reimbursed for that loss of, of revenue. And so it, it tends to be, you know, one of the last things every year uh, in appropriations bills where we're just looking out to, to make sure that it is in fact fully funded and we'll continue to do that. Uh, the third of our top priorities is emergency medical services. And this is a new one this year, but as we continue to talk to counties, it's one of the top things that that we hear about. And it's certainly a need. And 
I don't think it necessarily matters if it's small counties or large counties, everyone's talking about it. Um, so this priority, we're working to make sure that everyone can get EMS service. And so uh, what we're trying to do is make sure that county supervisors can pass a resolution, make it an essential service, and fund it without all of the hurdles that are, are currently in place. And so, uh, you know, <laughs> in, in, in these times, it's interesting to think about, uh, but we want to make sure that if there is an emergency at your house, that, that an ambulance shows up and, and can help you out. Uh, so giving the, the Board of Supervisors the opportunity to make that an essential service and be able to fund it in all 99 counties is essential. And I think with that, uh, Jamie, water quality. Very good. Thank you, Lucas. So yeah, so our last uh, uh, priority is on Iowa Natural uh, resources and water quality and, and water quantity. And uh, that, uh, you know, uh, with the, the governor had put forward with her Invest in Iowa Act last year and increasing the sales tax, that would have uh, funded Iowa well. And, and also, uh, she also put uh, money aside on mental health. So they kind of come in, in concert but between our first and, and our last priority. And so, We'll continue to to fight for that, and to uh, you know, it's been a long time coming uh, that uh, since they passed the original legislation uh, establishing I will and the uh, constitutional amendment, and we just want to see that uh, finally funded. And what you'll see at the bottom is a link uh, for not. I mean, these are our top uh, four priorities. Uh, but uh, with all of our affiliates, uh, Lucas and I will be working hard for each and every one of you uh, to make sure that to, your legislative agenda uh, moves forward. And so just uh, just because they're not at the top four doesn't mean that we're not going to be working as hard. So, so I will go to the next slide. So. Uh, what uh, the other thing we have been uh, very busy with, uh, especially now as a result of COVID, uh, is on the federal side, and then on the federal dollars uh, that have come into Iowa uh, with the uh, local government relief funds. And so right now, um, as of literally this morning, I think all 99 counties should have maxed out in their appropriation uh, that was assigned fr uh, from uh, the state of Iowa for uh, COVID-19 related expenses. There might be some additional dollars uh, that might uh, happen between now uh, and the end of the year. Uh, we'll certainly uh, let you know. And uh, I, I can uh, understand the frustration because you have these local government relief funds that come in. And I know you guys have had mental health dollars that have come in and I, you have had uh, public health dollars that have come in. So all I can say is I certainly, uh, anytime you have any questions, please contact us. And I'm happy to walk you through what's eligible, what's not eligible. And I all we wanna do for my sack is make sure that uh, you get uh, everything uh, that you deserve. On the federal side, uh, again, uh, so the next round of COVID-19 uh, funding, uh, there is debate now uh, on a, uh, a package between uh, the House and the Senate and uh, the President on uh, $916 billion, I believe. 
and uh, 160 uh, billion is assigned for state and local government. So what we have been doing on uh, with ISAC is advocating that those dollars go directly to counties, not to uh, have to go through all the hoops and everything that I know you guys have dealt with, uh, try to uh, to get uh, the addition or the other funding and so forth. So we just want to make sure those dollars go directly to counties. So all I can say is that uh, we want you to uh, just, we will give you updates and uh, any questions uh, that you would have, uh, please let us know. So, and that's all I have. So again, uh, it's an honor. Uh, Lucas and I go to the Hill every day and in a different way, we'll see what happens with, with this session, but it's an honor uh, to work for all of you, uh, but please don't hesitate to reach out to uh, both of us. So thank you. Rachel, we can't hear you probably unmute myself. I'll be the first one to not do that today. Uh, my name is Rachel Bennett and I'm the member relations manager. Uh, I echo the thanks that everybody else has said for your um, joining us today, obviously, and for your public service. Uh, it really is an honor to work for you. It's rewarding, it's educational, and it's a little bit fun too. Um, as you see, we are the member relations team and I am really honored to work with these women. They're hardworking, they're dedicated and they are amazing women. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the direct responsibilities that we do, communications, education and events, uh, supporting our office in West Des Moines, some of the marketing and corporate relations, the scholarship program. And I think what's most important is uh, providing extraordinary customer service to you, our members. Um, always come to us for help, we're here for you. Um, I am trying to do the slides and this at the same time. There we go. I will touch on uh, communications first. So one of the most important things that we put out every week during the legislative session is the ISEC update. Um, this will provide via email kind of an update on what's going on in the session. Uh, if you aren't getting the ISEC update, please let us know. Um, as you see on the screen, send the request to support at iowacounties.org and we'll make sure that you get those notices in the future. Um, other emails we do send out as well, uh, education, uh, notices from state departments, uh, as Jamie mentioned, COVID-19 updates with the pandemic um, and other related deadlines uh, that are sent to us to get to you. So we really are here to communicate to you. Uh, we hope that you find our emails uh, informational and again, just let us know if there's something we're not providing and we'll make sure to get it to you. Uh, secondly is our monthly publication. It is truly for you, for county officials and professionals in Iowa, it's the Iowa County Magazine. Uh, I am the editor of the magazine. So again, if there's anything you wanna see, just let us know. Uh, the ISAC website, www.iowacounties.org. Uh, don't get used to the look because we are actually working on a redesign right now, uh, but it will be the same URL, so you can go ahead and bookmark it. It's, a, it's got tons of resources, um, the salary survey, county directory, county financial overview are some of the most used, but feel free to poke around again if you have any questions, we'd be happy to navigate you through it. Um, I will pass it off now to Katie, who will describe some more. Thank you, Rachel. Um, I'm Katie Cook, the um, office coordinator for ISAC, and one of my duties is to um, administer Basecamp. And Basecamp is a communication tool that we use as an organization, and we also offer it to our affiliates at no cost. Um, this program is a great tool for groups and teams to use for communication, file storage, managing projects, etc. Um, this can be used for entire affiliate groups or smaller breakout groups and committees as well. Several affiliates and committees already do utilize this, so if you are interested in learning more about it or would like help setting up a Basecamp team, I'd be happy to help. So just reach out and I'll answer any questions you may have. Um, I will now pass it over to Kelsey Seaburn for events. 
All right, thanks, Katie. So I am Kelsey Siebert. I'm the event coordinator here at ISAC. So I first wanted to say that I miss seeing everybody um, at our live events, but please know that we are all excited to get back in person once it is safe to do so. So we're all excited about that. Um, I just wanted to quickly go over our upcoming events that we have on the calendar so far. Um, the first event that we have is our new county officer school, which the presentations will be recorded and put on our base camp site to view when it's convenient to you. So this will not be a live event. Um, registration is now open for this event on our website, so go check that out. Um, the next event that we have is our statewide supervisors meeting, which will be held virtually live on Thursday, January 28th. So registration is also open for supervisors um, now on our website. I did just want to mention County Day at the Capitol that usually takes place on the Wednesday before our spring conference. Um, we did just get an email letting us know that no events will happen in person at the Capitol this year. We're still planning on having something virtually, but just um, be on the lookout for more information um, when we get a little bit closer to the event. And then we also have our spring conference. It will look a little different this year, um, but we're still planning on having the conference in person at this time on Thursday, March 11th, and then Friday, March 12th. So registration for this event will open on Monday, January 18th. And then lastly, um, since we're not meeting in person at this time, we're trying to increase our webinar schedule. So please just keep a lookout for emails on all of our upcoming webinars that we will be hosting. So I will then pass it over back to Katie, I guess, for her to start um, talking about helping our affiliates virtually. Thank you, Kelsey. Um, so as you know, the ISAC office has been closed since um, to the public since the beginning of March. Um, and while that means that we're aren't, we aren't able to allow members to utilize our meeting rooms, we do have several virtual meeting opportunities available. Um, ISAC has Zoom for both meetings and webinars, as well as GoToMeeting and GoToWebinar. Um, we also have Microsoft Teams, so we do have a lot of options for you guys if you do um, need to meet virtually. Um, we offer these programs through our membership at little to no cost. It kind of just depends um, how much time is needed for that, but generally no cost at all, and we'll, we'd be happy to help you get that set up and help administer that for you. So feel free to reach out if you ever have questions or need to set something up virtually, and we'll be happy to help. Um, and at this time, we are doing random drawings throughout this for those that are registered for um, the webinar. And so the first winner is Melissa Banson with Cedar County. So we will reach out to you about getting you your prize. And I will pass it on to JC Ripperger now for corporate opportunities. Good afternoon, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is JC Ripperger and I'm the marketing coordinator here at ISAC. I work with our corporate partners to help them establish relationships with counties through our preferred vendor programs. The Preferred Vendor Program offers companies the ability to have year-round exposure to the full ISAC membership while helping support ISAC events throughout the year. Um, 2020 has obviously been a hard year for everyone, including our vendors, and I know they are all eager to see you all in person and make those face-to-face -face relationships. Um, until we can accommodate that safely again, we're working on ways to connect you all with our preferred vendors. So um, on that note, please stay tuned in the new year for um, our Creating Connections webinar series, um, which will be a way for you guys to all stay connected and learn more about our preferred vendors outside of the conference setting. Uh, so lastly, if you'd like to view a full list of our endorsed and preferred vendors, you can find them on our website under the preferred vendor tab or full um, company profile in the vendor directory. Um, and of course, please let me know if there are any great vendors that you guys are working with that you don't see on that list. Um, if you guys know somebody that would be a great fit for the program, I am happy to reach out and start that conversation. So um, before we move on, I'm going to announce the next winner for our raffle, which is Sherry Plaguey from um, Wright County. So we will be in contact with you to get you your prize. And then I have the last winner to announce. Um, it's Derek Hebert from Pocahontas County. So congratulations, Derek. Um, the ISAC Scholarship Program has been awarding annual scholarships for coming up on 25 years now. Um, these scholarships are awarded to high school seniors who are the children or dependent of Iowa County officials and employees. 
These scholarships are typically awarded at our ceremony during the um, ISAC Spring Conference General Session, although that may look a little different this coming year due to COVID. Um, and while I'm on COVID, the current pandemic has also unfortunately put constraints on our fundraising efforts for the scholarship program. Um, so there are two fundraising events coming up in 2021, the ISAC Scholarship Golf Fundraiser, which will be held on June 23rd at the Toad Valley Golf Course in Pleasant Hill, and also the ISAC Casino Night Fundraiser, which is held in conjunction with the um, ISAC Annual Conference on August 26th. So please mark those events down on your calendar and attend if you're able. The ISAC Education Foundation really needs the support of our members um, to be able to continue awarding scholarships to these deserving young adults. Um, so I will now pass it off to Christy and Beth for the legal portion of this presentation. Thank you. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Christy Harshberger, I'm ISAC's general counsel. And I, along with Beth Manley, our compliance officer, are the two attorneys on staff. And the main thing we do is provide an educational resource to all of you. Um, your county attorney is always going to be the legal representation or outside contracted attorney for your county. But I like to think of us as kind of like a reference attorney that you might call with the IRS. And I promise that Beth and I will not leave you on hold for as long as the IRS might do. But basically, you can call us and we'll try to point you in the right direction. So much like if you call the IRS, they might send you a form, um, give you some information but they won't necessarily fill out your taxes for you. So it's kind of the same thing. We can get you started, but we always encourage that you work with your county attorney for those final decisions. Um, if you find yourself in court, they're the ones that will be representing you. Um, so there's basically three or four categories that I think are the most common ways that you can access us as an educational resource. One of the categories is where do I find it questions. So let's say, you know, there's a case out there on vacation time for county employees, but you can't find it. Or you're wondering about what are all the reasons that you can close a public meeting? Um, we can get you that code section. Or maybe, you know, there's an AG opinion on how public board of health works and you're wondering where that is. We can help you find those things. A different way is if your county attorney refers questions to us or at your county attorney asks you to reach out to us, especially in smaller counties with smaller offices, um, your county attorney has a lot of prosecution duties and may not feel like they have the time or expertise in a particular area. They can send them, they can send you to us. Um, another thing is resources of general applicability or new updates. So the example I would give here with COVID pandemic, as all of you know, there were a lot of federal rules that were changing significantly and quickly. Um, so we put together frequently asked questions up on our website to try to address some of those issues. Another area where I think we can be a good resource is to work with affiliate needs. So that might be if you need bylaws or you need updates to your bylaws for your affiliates, um, or you need help with some sort of contract or governing document that you're working with for your affiliate, we can help there. Um, also, if you need speakers for your events, whether it's something that we can provide or maybe you need ideas, on legal topics and legal speakers, you can always reach out to us. Um, the other area is our litigation committee. So I'm the staff person on that. And then it's chaired by the county attorney on our board and several other board members. And there are different ways that we can help you with the litigation committee. It's primarily if you find yourself in a lawsuit that you think might have an impact statewide on counties. Um, you can reach out to us and we can bring it before the litigation committee and we can provide different kinds of support. I think probably the most common thing that comes out of our litigation committee is front of the court briefs. So if your case proceeds to an administrative standpoint, um, comes before the Iowa Supreme Court, we can look at doing a front of the court brief to support your efforts there. Um, but we also do other things. There have been situations where if your county finds the need to have outside legal counsel, we can look to the other counties to help support in those costs if it'll impact them as well. Or probably the most recent example that we have is the opioid lawsuit, where we've been encouraging counties to get involved so they can participate in the settlement agreement on that. Um, as I said, we're always happy to help, so feel free to reach out to us, and I will turn it over to Beth to talk about our HIPAA program. 
Hi, so I'm Beth Manley. Um, I'm ISAC compliance officer and I manage the ISAC HIPAA program. So the program provides basic consultation assistance and training on general HIPAA topics and issues for Iowa counties and MHGS regions for a small yearly fee. So the benefits of the program include a yearly HIPAA 101 webinar. Some counties use this as annual training for countywide employees and some people just uh, use it as kind of a um, refresher for people that are in charge of their compliance programs. We also have an annual uh, uh, day-long in-person HIPAA training for up to five individuals in your county or region. This is meant more for people who are actively involved in your compliance program. Um, obviously, it can be done virtually. So this year, we had three presentations spread out between two different days. We also have a webinar series about various HIPAA, top, HIPAA topics. Um, past webinars have included risk analysis, cybersecurity, compliance committees and hybrid entities, vendor privacy. Um, basically, I come up with webinar ideas from questions I get from members. So if there's a specific webinar topic that you want, I'm happy to put a webinar together. I also have newsletters with articles about recent guidance, frequently asked questions, recent enforcement actions, and then you also get five hours of consultation time with our outside counsel, who is Alyssa Smith. She works, she's a partner at Dorsey & Whitney Law Firm. Now this five hour cap does not apply to questions that I answer. I'm able to answer most questions that our members have, but if you want to talk to Alyssa specifically, um, or if we need a second opinion on something, then that's when that five hour uh, limit um, starts. And then all materials created by the program are saved on a password protected website. So you always have access to past materials, whether or not it was in a previous year. Um, the program runs July through June and the yearly fee is 1950 for a new county, 2000 for a new region or 1750 for returning counties and regions. And I'm constantly trying to improve the program. So if there's something you want or if you have any ideas, please let me know and I'll look into it. And I'm basically here for anything you need. So feel free to ask me any questions you have. All right, so let's talk a little bit about ISAC's information technology team. Um, my name is Dylan Young. I am the IT manager and software developer for ISAC. Um, with my team, I have Nick Ballard and Chris Schwayback, who are also software developers. Ashley Clark is our IT project coordinator. Tyler, no Tyler Conley is our network administrator. And then we have Randy Kanzler, who is our CSN program coordinator. And I'll talk here in a couple slides of what exactly CSN is. So. Next slide, please. So what does our team do? Well, when it all boils down, we're either doing um, software development, support, um, or network administration. And then I listed kind of the different groups that you're hearing from today. Um, different departments that are part of ISAC and the different services that they offer to the appropriate affiliates. Um, for example, the IPAC-1, um, Iowa Precinct Atlas Consortium, um, they offer a voter registration system um, that we currently do the development for. Um, ISAC, uh, Rachel mentioned some of the tools that maybe you guys use, such as uh, the legislative tracking tool, election tool, salary survey, county directory, um, the event registration system and the vendor registration system. Um, those are all systems either we created, um, support, or um, develop. So, and then of course CSN, which is probably the biggest project that we work on, which is the Community Services Network. And on this slide, uh, kind of shows our allocation of time, and you can see that CSN is primarily what we work on. So. So I'll explain a little bit of what CSN actually is. Um, to sum it up, it's basically, it's a web application used by the counties and regions 
um, and it's used for tracking client care and services um, that they may need for mental health and disability services, substance abuse treatment, um, general assistance, veterans affairs, and et cetera. Um, it also used to track the financial operations um, for providing these types of services. So as you can imagine with all this health data being captured, uh, CSN focuses on being HIPAA and state law compliant. And we currently have 98 of the 99 counties using it and um, 13 MHCS regions. And then we also have a handful of other different departments kind of listed here, um, providers, general assistance, veterans affairs, and a bunch of different entities using it. Um, just some fun stats we're at about roughly 255,000 client um, health records and about 300 active users. So system's constantly growing and um, yeah, it's always expanding. We can go to the next. Um, I kind of want to just do a little shout out to our subcommittees that make this all possible. Um, couldn't do it without them. Our operations committee is made up of uh, representatives from each MHCS region. Um, their primary goal um, and what they do is they kind of help approve or deny the projects that are um, either requested or enhancements that are requested from users and they, they kind of drive um, where the future of the project goes and what we're working on. Um, our advisory committee, they kind of focus on the financials and the overall objective of the project and then they make recommendations that get approved by the ICTS board which um, Bill kind of showed in the first part of this. So thank you to all the committees and boards. So I kind of want to just uh, list uh, the completed projects that we did for fiscal year 20. Um, I won't talk about all of them for the sake of time, but some interesting ones to point out. Uh, for ISAC, we did redo the legislative tracking tool. Um, that was a project that needed to be done for a while and I'm glad to get that one done. Uh, another cool one is, even though COVID hit, but uh, hopefully we can start meeting back in person because our uh, event registration system now uh, integrates with the Batch Scanner app. So that'll be pretty cool and fun to test out. Um, CSN's always expanding, like I said. So we, we did a bunch of stuff for general assistance, as you can see, uh, some modules for them to use to help, help out their jobs. Um, a lot of different reporting things that we added. We integrated with Tableau, which is a third party, uh, very visual and uh, enhanced reporting system. So we got that integrated into the system. And then IPAC, uh, we worked on version 5.8.6 uh, for the primary election. So. Um, current projects that we're working on, um, got a couple of big ones that are exciting that were actually hitting the ground running finally. Um, the first one is integrating with the criminal justice information system or CGIS as we call it. And the goal of this project is actually to get um, live data feed of adult arrest records um, for clients that are in CSN. And this saves not only on data entry, but we can use this data and hopefully, you know, provide the right types of services to these clients and help get them out of jail if needed. Another big one is the Polk County integration. So a couple months ago, Polk County reached out to us um, uh, interested in coming into CSN. So they would be the final county to come in, final county and region. And we, uh, a couple months ago, we worked to identify um, some things that they would like to see within CSN uh, for them to want to come in. Um, those were approved by the boards for us to work on. And we've actually started on those and we hope to have them in our system July of 2022. And then other current projects coming up, uh, Precinct Atlas 5.8.8. Um, a lot of law changes based on felony changes and that that's kind of what that update will entail. So future plans, kind of in general stuff here. Um, CSN has it's always changing, like I said, so we're always working on the reporting section and what we can do with the data that we have. Um, we're really trying to focus on getting quality data and doing what we can to whether train regions and counties to make sure that 
they're inputting the data correct and you know they're doing the best practices because ultimately the, the better the data we have the, the more we can do with it and provide better services to the client um for isac a couple tools that you probably are used to seeing that definitely are due for an update that we have on the list um, plan to do probably the salary survey and the county directory uh, rewrite for both of those once uh, Rachel's team gets the new website uh, working. So other than that, if you guys have any questions, uh, I left a couple emails based on your types of inquiries. So CSN can reach us at that email and any other IT concerns, you can reach us at that IT staff. So thank you. All right, good afternoon. Uh, we'll talk finances here. Um, I am Brad Holton, the Finance and Program Services Manager for ISAC. Um, the most important person on the finance team is Molly Hill, is uh, pictured there. Um, a majority of the things we do tend to be behind the scenes. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> um, so our, our primary tasks uh, obviously, from a financial standpoint, uh, you know, collection of receivables, you know, making the payments, the payable side. Uh, we oversee the internal controls uh, for ISAC. We ensure that everything is uh, invested properly, investments. Um, we, sure, we make sure we have the proper insurance coverage uh, for our staff. Um, and then we also oversee five audits and three tax returns. Uh, the financial accounts, so we do ISAC corporate, uh, we have four insurance programs, four 28E organizations, we do the financials for four affiliates, uh, which results in 15 checking accounts, 12 savings accounts, and 11 investment accounts. So it, it is kind of a full-time job to keep everything straight, um, but like I said, we do the financials for four affiliates, so if your affiliate is interested in us handling your finances so you don't have to pass the treasurer or change the checking account every time your treasurer changes, uh, please reach out, we can talk through it. Um, next slide. Uh, so while I oversee the you know, finance side of things, um, I primarily find myself working on the programs we offer to ensure they operate effectively uh, and provide the services that you have come to expect. Um, so while I'm working on that, Molly spends most of her time uh, working on the wellness program, the unemployment program uh, and a lot of the day-to-day -day financial activities uh, so you can see the different the four different insurance programs that we do offer uh, self-funded group health program which I'll get into in detail here next slide um, self-funded dental program oh sorry go back um, we have 20 counties uh, ISAC corporate uh, in that one and we have one mental health region uh, that are in the dental program we have 21 counties in our unemployment program, and then our voluntary AD&D program uh, has 42 counties that participate. Uh, I also assist in uh, kind of overseeing the uh, Iowa Precinct Atlas Consortium and the Iowa County Attorney's Case Management Project. Each of those has their own program manager, which uh, they will be speaking after me. So uh, next slide. Uh, so I'm going to go into detail about the group health program because uh, this does take up uh, quite a bit of time uh, for us um, in the finance department. Um, so we have a self-funded pool. This uh, has about 25 counties, uh, ISAC corporate and one mental health region. Uh, and it, it is uh, growing as we speak. Um, some of the benefits of the group health program, uh, the rates are these delivered in December, which is right around uh, budget time. So it's, it's perfect time. Uh, if you're direct with Wellmark or any other insurance carrier, you probably don't get your rates till March or April. So that's a, a big benefit that we've found. Uh, group Health, uh, Group Benefit Partners is a broker uh, for our pool. And uh, if you have insurance through our pool, that broker fee is paid by the pool. Uh, we offer an employee assistance program and uh, we also offer consolidated billing. Uh, we have a, a, an employee portal, uh, so the county can put keep track of all their health insurance. Any ancillary products would go in there as well, so it's a one-stop shop. 
Uh, we also offer a wellness program, accident insurance plan, and ancillary products. So next screen. Uh, so our wellness plan, uh, we like I said, we have 25 counties that participate. We actually have uh, 26. Uh, we have a 26th county that uh, participates as well, but they're not part of our health plan. So we kind of help them administrator or administrate their wellness plan as well. Uh, so all employees covered under the ISAC health plan uh, qualify for this wellness plan, and the employees can earn up to $200 based on participation. Uh, so it's $75 for an annual physical, $25 for completing the annual assessment, and then $25 for completing a program under one of the eight uh, pillars, and they can complete up to four of them. So um, it's pretty pretty comprehensive. Uh, the annual physical, the $75 will come into play, uh, gets paid by the accident insurance plan, which we're rolling out uh, effective January 1st. Uh, and then on top of all that, the county uh, receives $30 uh, per contract to cover uh, wellness incentives or, or lunch and learns for the staff. Uh, the accident plan, um, so all employees are covered under the ISAC health plan. Uh, they qualify for that. Uh, that insurance will be provided by Reliance Standard. And then employees are automatically enrolled in the core accident plan at no cost because that will be paid by the group health plan. So it's a it's a, another really big benefit. Um, and then the employee has the option to upgrade uh, to an enhanced plan or to add family members to the coverage. Uh, and then there's a fifty thousand dollar AD and D coverage included in that accident plan. Uh, last but not least. Um, the group health program, you know, other products, you know, there's voluntary life, long term, short term. Um, there's that accident plan. Uh, we do have uh, five different dental insurance plan options. Uh, that is also a self funded uh, dental program that we operate. Uh, and then a vision insurance that we kind of sponsor with uh, Delta Vision. So, um, so there's a lot going on in group health. Um, I think we've we've come a long ways uh, since over the summer in trying to put the best kind of ancillary products together. Um, so it's been taking uh, quite a bit of time. So uh, I think that is all I have from the finance department. So uh, if you have any questions or, or uh, want to go into group health or whatever, uh, just reach out. Good afternoon. Um, for those of you who do not know who I am, my name is Jessica Trobaugh, and I am the project manager for the Iowa County Attorney's Case Management Project. Along with myself, Brock Rickers is also part of our project and is our IT support specialist. And Molly Stefan is also with our project, and she does our customer support and assists me at um, our on-site and um, remote trainings. So our project started back in 2005 when seven county attorney's offices across the state decided that they wanted to come together and find a data management software system that could be more standardized for prosecution. Back in those days, there weren't really any prosecution-based software options. Most of them were written for private practice. So they came together and those seven counties chose a software package, which we're gonna talk about here in just a minute, called ProLaw. Um, by 2016, our project had grown to 56 counties, over 500 users, and the Attorney General's office. And we realized that being kind of on our own and floating in the middle of no man's land is probably not the best place for us. So at that point in time, we reached out to ISAC, and we are proud to say in 2016, we became part of the ISAC um, family, and we are proud to be part of this organization. Um, as you can see on your screen, the Iowa County attorneys um, have two different support products that we offer at this time. Ever since 2005, we've offered ProLaw. Now, there's a difference in these products, and I want to just give a quick overview of that so that you can um, have that information. So ProLaw is a server-based product. That being said, what that means is your county would host that software on a server within your own county. The other product that we have it's called Prosecutor by Carpel, and this has been a huge highlight for our project in 2020. We just offered, started offering this project in March when we signed co contracts with Prosecutor by Carpel, and this is a cloud-based software. So this software is 
the option that people can use 24 seven anywhere in the world that they are, that they have internet access. Both of these software packages offer the users the opportunity to keep all of their case files individually in the software package. They're able to automate document generation and assembly. They're able to keep all of their upcoming hearings and court files in the individual court um, cases within the system. And it also allows them to be able to pull case statistics and information whether it's just for them, the general public, or for the Board of Supervisors out of both of these systems. Next slide, please. So we realized as we were going along the way in about 2010 that we were all double entering the same information. So we joined with our justice partners as well as with CJIS, the Criminal Justice Information Systems with the state, and we wrote some data exchanges. So both products that we offer have these data exchanges built for them and they come with the software standard now for any county who's part of our project. The first exchange is the complaint exchange. So after a law enforcement officer writes a ticket, it goes directly to the clerk of court. And as soon as the clerk of court approves that ticket, it opens up automatically in the software package for the county attorney. That eliminates us having to enter all of the defendant information, um, the charging information, and we also get a copy of the court number as well as the complaint and affidavit that was filed by the court system. Down the road, when hearings are entered into each case on the court scheduler, they are now automatically populated within our databases as well, which eliminates us having to add each and every one of those hearings ourselves one by one. The victim exchange is an exchange that allows county attorneys at the completion of a case to send the victim information and contact information to the Department of Corrections. This means that Department of Corrections can now have the most up-to-date information on that victim. So if they need to contact them down the road, they have the ability to do so. The charge code exchange is the exchange that allows anytime there's a law update for me to go into my master database update the charge code and push that information seamlessly out to every county that's part of our project. So before we had this exchange, every county had to wait months for all of these things to be added to a system, put on a disk and mailed out to them to update their systems. Now it's all done seamlessly. The minute I have it updated in the master system, any county that is part of our project has that information within minutes. Next slide, please. As you can see from this map, we currently have approximately 58 counties now, and those are shown in blue. We have five more counties that are looking to join us in 2021, and the Attorney General's Office is also part of our project. Next slide, please. So looking towards the future. Um, so one of the things that we are looking to do here in the next year or so is to bring on some additional data exchanges. Some of those exchanges will be huge for county attorney's offices. They will allow them to hopefully file directly into the court system through their data management system and not have to toggle between both systems. Um, we are also looking at moving approximately 23 more of our counties that are currently pro law counties to the prosecutor by Carpel project. If you have any questions about our project or your county attorney would like to reach out to me, please have them do so and they can reach out by email or through our website. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm excited to introduce to you the IPAC program. The IPAC program is a poll book system that replaces the paper registry books that voters had used in the past to sign in and receive their ballots. It also assists the PEOs, or better known as precinct election officials, in processing all voters that come into a polling location on election day. The election world in recent years has had many law changes, and the IPAC software is compliant with these changes, which ultimately assists the PEOs and voters in Iowa. Next slide. Now for a little history on our program. The Precinct Atlas software was developed originally back in 2008. 
The same year, Iowa began allowing election day registrations. It was created by Ken Klein, former Saragordo County Auditor, and it was first used in election in Saragordo County in 2009. Ken introduced the software to other counties who were interested due to how it helped the PEOs in processing voters on election day, which in turn allowed for the creation of the Iowa Precinct Atlas Consortium, or IPAC, in 2013. Saragordo County continued to support the program until January 1st of 2018, when IPAC signed a 28E agreement with ISAC for ISAC to begin the support administration of the program. Now, the ISAC staff, staff that form the IPAC team are as follows. We have Molly Steffen, Customer Support Coordinator, Chris Swaybach, Software Developer, Brock Rikers, Software Support Specialist, and myself, who has the honor of being the Program Manager. IPAC has an eight-person board of directors made of county auditors and the Futures Committee chairperson. The current board consists of Marge Pitts, Clay County Auditor, Carla Becker, Delaware County Auditor, Sandy Heisel, Union County Auditor, Travis Wipert, Johnson County Auditor, Amanda Harlan, Monroe County Auditor, Julia Helm, Dallas County Auditor, Dennis Parrott, Jasper County Auditor, and Karen Showalter, who is the Blackhawk County Elections Deputy and Futures Committee Chairperson. The Futures Committee is also made up of eight members who can either be a county auditor or an elections deputy. The goal of this committee is to uh, provide guidance to ISAC and the IPAC Board of direction, Directors for any enhancements to the software or changes needed. Now, you may ask yourself, why is IPAC important? The program benefits its 81 member counties by providing compliant software, hardware and software support, training, low membership fees, and ultimately, ownership in the program. The program and software are owned by the member counties. Plus, PEOs love it, and it helps to provide uh, a fast and quick compliance service to the voters in Iowa. Next slide. The future is looking bright for the IPAC program. We made it through a record-breaking election, and with the state poll book program ending this year, we have the opportunity for growth and will be welcoming new counties into the program in 2021. The Futures Committee and the IPAC Board will be working with the ISAC staff to rewrite the back end of the software to enable it to be more flexible with changing election laws. There will be a new and improved absentee module, which was heavily used by members this year due to the pandemic. And we began to have training videos for PEOs. And so in the future, we wish to create more virtual training for them. Finally, we are proud to support this important program for IPAC and are honored to be part of the election process in Iowa. I wanted to take a moment and thank all the county auditors, their staff, and all the county officials that stepped up and helped to enable the elections to go forward in a safe and secure manner during a pandemic. It could not have been done without all of you. Thank you for everything you do and know it is truly appreciated. Thank you. So uh, we, we come to the uh, conclusion of the webinar. And um, I think there, uh, Katie, are there ways that people could send in a question if they had a question uh, that they wanted to ask before we close the webinar? Yeah, they can send that in via the chat box or the question box. Um, we don't have any currently right now though. Okay, thank you, Katie. So I just want to, uh, first of all, I want to thank all of the uh, ISAC uh, uh, team managers and team members that were on the uh, webinar this afternoon. As you can see, 
the Iowa State Association uh, is involved in a lot of stuff related to counties across the state. Uh, we currently have uh, 21 members uh, on our staff, that would be including myself, that do a terrific job uh, day in and day out of making sure that these programs and services that we provide to you are up and operational. Uh, many of them are require a 24 seven operational status and uh, they really step up and do a terrific job. But uh, there's only one reason that we really do this and that's because of you as county officials and counties across the state. Uh, as we have said, and you've heard from many of these staff, we are so proud to uh, represent you, to work for you, and try and help you uh, do the important job that you do uh, for each of the citizens across the state of Iowa. And we can't do it without you. So uh, please be involved and be engaged. And if you ever need help, uh, you can reach out to us uh, each individually or just contact the support at iowacounties.org and we'll be happy to try and assist you in any way possible. So thank you for your time this afternoon. I wanna wish you a happy holiday season and hopefully a great new year when we're hoping that we can get back together in person and see each of you. Uh, I know that we all miss that, but uh, for now, let's all be safe and uh, have a great year. Thanks.